Since electromagnetic theory has a close relationship with special relativity, let's look at special relativity a little bit more and introduce the concept of the four vector. Now, the world is four dimensional. You have length, width, and height. You have x, y, and z, and we have the time dimension. To put these on an equal footing, time and space, we multiply time by the constant, which is the same constant from all inertial frames of reference, the speed of light. This is the four vector right here, and dx with the super mu, the subscript there, gives you the differential form. Don't worry why I'm using superscripts at the moment. Now, when you look at this length of this vector, we have the minus sign in the quadratic form with respect to the time. There is a relative minus sign. Now, you can define this with the minus sign in front of the time differential and put pluses here and some books do that that's one convention in fact we did it earlier when we had t in the form of the ict squared we got the minus c squared t squared but this is the more common convention to do it in this form when you set up the invariance so if you look at this this is going to be the same in all frames of reference and here is the prime frame and this is the unprime frame. They're going to be the same. And suppose we're in a frame where this prime frame, the dz prime, dy prime, and dx prime are zero. Then we simply have just a time component. So we're looking at someone zip by us, and they're just at rest in their own frame. So that's what would be in the k prime frame. See, and then this would be our frame watching them zip by. So these have to be the same, and by setting them equal, we can then solve for the T prime. And the T prime is the proper time, since it's the clock in the frame that it's in. And we'll use D tau for that. And when we do that, we can divide by the uh, C squared and pull the C squared out. And when you do that, you get this nice appearance of the c squared factored out with the 1 minus v squared over c squared because c dx squared dt squared this is the velocity x squared plus the velocity y squared plus z squared and then a minus sign overall so that's your v squared over c squared and the compact result when you take the square root since the c squared drop out you get this and we already have seen this this is nothing more than the proper time and the laboratory time relationship. Remember that d tau we called earlier t naught, and then dt would be t, so this is what we found earlier. And this can be thought of when you write it in this fashion, the square root under the d tau. This could be thought of as the differential version of the proper time time equation. So here is the four dimensions again, and what we're going to do now is take the derivative with respect to tau, and that's the proper time that we're using. And this is a very deep idea. Einstein did this, and it turns out that doing it this way, when you set up your momentum, you get the conservation of momentum, and you get the truly covariant forms, as we say, in special relativity where the equations look the same, the physics is the same in one frame to another. So from this point of view, you might say, well, you know, if I take the derivative with respect to tau, tau is magic. That is the, the invariant, you know, proper time. So let's do it from aesthetic or philosophical uh, arguments. And then if we do that, we get the velocity, the four velocity, the four vector for the velocity. And you simply take the derivatives and we will substitute for the d tau what we have up here d tau is simply dt hit it with that square root thing so if you do that you hit the dt's with the square root then they're your d tau so all the d tau's get replaced by in the denominator dt's being hit with this square root and doing that we arrive at the four velocity these are simply uh, your velocities in the x, y, and z direction, dt, dt, is 1, so 1 times c there, and then your velocities in the spatial uh, dimensions. And here we can write this as a vector, 3 vector, for the space, and this is your 4 vector. And this appearance, 
so often in special relativity, we let that be gamma, and then we can write this in a compact form for the four velocity gamma times the c common the v vector. Now, notice that this is saying that we are forced to move in the time dimension at the speed of light. You can think of that as we're moving in our, into our future at light speed. Here I have a choice. I can make this zero. So I can stop or I can go faster, but in the time dimension, I'm stuck. I'm basically traveling in the time dimension with everyone else here, basically, with this, with this C. So that's a very interesting uh, point. And when you transform uh, in relativity, of course, you know time transforms in strange ways and space transforms in, in strange ways. But I want to point out that there's a constant here. And that constant means that I am not free to move in the time dimension. And that is the U super naught. In other words, the zeroth component. We like to think of this as a zeroth component and then the one, two, three components for the space. Then the four momentum is, by definition, the mass times the four velocity. And this is the form of the momentum that's relativistically correct and gives you conservation of momentum. Well, let's look at these four vectors again, and let's define now the four vector with the lower subscript. Now, these have profound means in tensor analysis. This is called a contravariant vector, and this is a covariant vector. And then when you look at those, see they're basically the same except for a minus sign in the spatial dimensions. And then when you take this four vector dot product, where you basically are summing all of them, the minus sign kicks in automatically because one is a superscript and one is a subscript. And see, when you look at this here, you know, CT, CT, both positive, so you get c squared t squared but then since the r vector and this is the minus r vector when you take the dot product you get the minus sign so this is a way to build in the idea of the four vector length automatically and here we're using einstein summation convention since these two indices are repeating it's assumed that'll be zero zero one one two two and three three when you do the uh this kind of thing for the space, the four vector space time, then you get the invariance, the proper time squared. When you do it for the four momentum, we do the same thing. Let's just go ahead and check it out. We'll get the gamma squared, we'll get m squared c squared, and then minus m squared v squared. And if you look at this and pull out the m squared uh, c squared, then what's left here is 1 over, uh, 1 minus rather, v squared over c squared, it'll cancel out, and you get an invariance again. So this is very, very profound in special relativity. The four vectors are invariant. Uh, you get a constant. So it's the four, the four vector for the space time, the length squared gives you tau squared, the proper time squared, and the four momentum, when you take the length, you get the mass squared times the c squared, both here constants.